Ink Ribbon. By today's standards, the original Resident Evil 1 is endearing. While at the time it was revolutionary, the remake, or rebirth, was the true way that fans were meant to experience the game and revitalized not just the original, but the series as a whole. After about three weeks of scouring the internet for information, I'm very excited to bring you my list of the top 10 secrets and easter eggs in Resident Evil 1 Remake. Let's get started. Number 10 Changes As expected, the remake has a few things that were either added, removed, or reworked. The notable ones I found are as follows. The graveyard with the crows was actually cut from the original game, but added back into the remake. Lisa Trevor's subplot and character were added. Improved inventory system and self-defense items. Script and localization changes. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Really? <laughs> New enemies, notably the Crimson Heads. Reworked puzzles and item locations. Number 9 Censorship There were two notable cases of censorship that were introduced across all versions of the game. Originally, when hunters kill you in one swipe, your character would have been decapitated, as seen in the original beta footage, but this was removed. Also one interesting change was at the end of the game, when you blow up the tyrant with the final rocket, his body exploding into chunks was covered up by a much larger explosion. Number 8 Mystery Faces Now we all know that Jill's face model is Julia Voth, but I thought I'd look into the other characters' face models and I discovered some weird stuff. Most of this information came from the WordPress site called Games and Movies Blog, and I'll post the link to that below if you want to see the full written story, which is surprisingly thorough. So when I looked up Chris's face model, there is no credit given, but after the person behind this site reached out, he got this email back saying that they used several models to create one Chris face, which is very odd from an industry standpoint. So basically to sum up all of his searching, the widely accepted fan theories are that Remake Chris's face is a combination of two models, Ruben Langdon and Matt Mullins, but there's no confirmation there. And Chris isn't the only one. This also seems to apply to Wesker, Barry, Richard, and basically every male character. And Rebecca is modeled after the Japanese singer and actress Ayumi Hamasaki. So why they only use direct models for the female characters remains a mystery, but uh, that's all I've got. Number 7 Sales so when the remake of 1 came out, it was exclusively on the Nintendo GameCube, which was part of an exclusivity deal that made the next three Resident Evil games only available on Nintendo's platforms. This deal was really weird, considering that they were mature games and Nintendo was known for their family-friendly games and image. Well, this simultaneously hurt and helped the franchise as a whole. When the game was released, it didn't sell anywhere near as much as Capcom had anticipated, which made the executives nervous as they were working on Resident Evil Zero at that time. By the time Resident Evil 4 came out, the numbers were just pretty bad, which was leading the series into a really bad place financially. But the silver lining to this is that usually these exclusivity deals are based on stipulations that a certain amount of copies will sell, which in this case it really didn't. This allowed Capcom to break away from Nintendo and release their Resident Evil 4 on different consoles, and as we know, that went really, really well for Capcom. So thanks to Nintendo, Resident Evil will probably never be console exclusive ever again. Number 6 Hidden Cutscenes in the game, there are many different things to do, and you can do them in any order you want, but doing things this way can lead to a lot of cutscenes that aren't usually seen. If you go into the dining room as Jill, don't go into the zombie hall. Instead, go back into the main hall and talk to Wesker. That gunfire. I'm counting on you to investigate, Jill. Sure thing, Wesker. 
then go back into the dining room. Try to go back into the main hall again, and this scene plays. Got cold feet already? That's not like you. You know the infamous Jill sandwich cutscene where Barry saves Jill? If you go talk to Richard, or if Barry gives you the acid rounds first, this cutscene won't happen and Jill will actually be pressed into a sandwich. Immediately after getting the armor key, go to Forrest's body to get Jill, this scene. Jill, this is no longer useful to Forrest. We don't know what's going to happen. Take it with you. If Richard dies in the aqua ring, Rebecca will cry in the chemical room. Be strong, Rebecca. If Rebecca dies in the mansion, the cutscene revealing the tyrant will be very different. Of course you are one of my men. Thanks. And a little bonus egg, if you put the answer to the x-ray puzzle as mole, the answer from the original game, you'll hear the sound of tofu. Number 5. Movie reference. A lot of people in the forum seem to really hate Chris's casual outfit, but I think it's really cool. Especially when you realize it's a reference to Brad Pitt in the movie The Mexican. Jill's commando outfit is also a movie reference, inspired by Sarah Connor in the Terminator movies. While we're on the subject of costumes, there are a lot that didn't make it into the game, including Sneaking Suit Jill, Business Jill, Cowgirl Jill, various bro versions of Chris, Karate Chris, and Leather Daddy Chris. Number 4 Glitches The most famous glitch is the grenade launcher glitch with Jill, only available in the GameCube version, where by moving ammo around in a very certain way causes it to multiply. There are a few rare glitches as well, such as this one where timing the armor key a certain way can cause Jill to be bumped forward without killing her. You can also get your character stuck in the Maiden statue. Only in the PS3 version, there's a glitch that causes the game to completely lock up. This will happen when you try to proceed through the cemetery area with the crows in Jill's Resident Evil 3 outfit and will require you to restart your console. And lastly, in rare instances, you can get chased by a headless crimson head, as if they weren't terrifying enough. Number 3 Lisa Trevor so, most people just regard Lisa as this sad monster that's just kind of there, but when you look more into her backstory, it's not only tragic as hell, but has a ton of connections and implications that lead throughout the series. Lisa was the daughter of George Trevor, the architect who designed the mansion for Oswell Spencer. When the mansion was completed, Lisa and her mother drove up to the mansion to meet Trevor, only to be detained by Spencer's security and imprisoned. They were then used as test subjects for new viruses being developed. When they tried to escape, Lisa's mother was killed and Lisa was recaptured and put into her own secret prison. For 11 years. Now here's where Lisa becomes integral to the rest of the series. They found that no matter what they did, they couldn't kill her, which made her the perfect test subject. William Birkin used her to implant her with a special parasite that was killed and then absorbed by Lisa's body, since the environment inside her body was too hazardous for even a parasite to survive. But, this led to a mutation that caused the first strain of the G-Virus. And you can see a big eyeball on her back as proof of this. While William continued his own research with the G-Virus, Lisa continued to mutate eventually sprouting tentacles from her body and becoming basically indestructible, which led her body to create the Nemesis T-type virus, which, as you would guess, was used to create the Nemesis. Sorry, Jill. Number 2 Unlockables This iteration of Resident Evil has some of the coolest and unique game modes that were never used again for some reason, but all of the unlocks in the game are as follows. 
To unlock hard mode, beat the game on normal. For invisible enemy mode, beat the game on hard mode. And yes, all enemies will be invisible. To unlock the infinite handgun called the Samurai Edge, beat the game on normal or hard in under 5 hours. To unlock the infinite rocket launcher, beat the game on normal or hard in under 3 hours. For one dangerous zombie mode, beat the game once with both Chris and Jill. This mode makes Forrest run around the mansion with bombs strapped to his chest and if you try to kill him, the mansion explodes and it's an automatic game over. This will automatically be activated and can't be turned off once you unlock it, but he will disappear after you use all four of the death masks. To unlock real survival mode, just beat the game once. This mode is one of the best modes if you like a good challenge. The game is automatically set to hard, auto-aim is disabled, and none of the inventory boxes are linked anymore. This is a nod to the original prototype of the game. It's also worth noting that the doorknob that breaks will stay fixed, one dangerous zombie won't appear anywhere, and any unlocked infinite weapons are not available in this mode. And for the unlockable costumes, just beat the game once and then twice with each character. Number 1 Why the Remake there was always a fan demand for Resident Evil 2 to be remade, but they opted to remake the first game. Why? Well, there are a few reasons. A large part of it is, again, due to Nintendo. They struggled to figure out what direction to take the series since gaming had moved so far forward since the last installment, so they opted for remakes, being one of the first gaming franchises to be remade. Probably the bigger reason it was remade was simply that Shinji Mikami, the creator of Resident Evil, just wasn't happy with how the first game had aged. This remake allowed him to bring his original vision to life as well as making the game more accessible to new fans. You have to remember, when they were making the original Resident Evil, they were revolutionizing the world of gaming and inventing a lot of stuff. There was no one there to teach them or tell them what they were doing wrong, so the first game is a... Uh, a little bit wonky, especially if you played the later entries first like I did. But I think it's safe to say that the remake did a pretty good job of creating the true experience that Mikami wanted for fans and we probably owe the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3 to this game. And that's it for this video. Know of anything else that I missed? Let me know in the comments or find me on Twitter at Ink Ribbon Games and you can also join the Ink Ribbon Discord server. Links to all of those are in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to my bronze, silver, and gold Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, I can make videos without worrying about demonetization and grow my channel faster.